Amen. I just want to take a few minutes. Can we put the title of my message up there? I want to go back to John 4. And in John 4, it's dealing with the Samaritan woman. And remember when Jesus said in John chapter 4, uh, verse 14, he said, or chapter 4, verse 4, he told his disciples, I need to go through Samaria. Aren't you glad that the Lord pursues you even when you're not pursuing him? He comes after you even when you're not looking for him. He's coming after you because he loves you. He's a good shepherd. He's a wonderful shepherd. He's coming after you. When he comes after you, the woman's all upset. She's angry. She, she's a wounded, scarred woman. She's been hurt by lots of men, married several times. And she begins to ask questions about why. Why would you, a Jew, talk to me? It's interesting. Jesus doesn't even respond to her questions. Instead, he gives her the right questions to ask. He says this, if you would only ask for the living water, I'd freely give it to you. I'd freely give it to you. Sometimes when we ask the wrong questions like, why, Lord? Why has this happened to me? Why am I going, do, do you know you may not get an answer, but when you begin to say things like this, Lord, what would you have me learn through this? When you begin to ask the right questions, do you know you're gonna get some answers? You're also gonna get some breakthroughs. How many of you like breakthroughs? Well, I wanna to talk to you just a little bit about walls because Jesus introduces the fountain, but this woman had a lot of walls inside of her. Now there's a lot of people today have walls in them. Walls are inside of us because we've been wounded, we've been scarred. There can be fear, walls of fear. There's a lot of walls, walls of racism, walls of sexism. We are in a nation right now where people have a lot of walls, they're isolating, a lot of walls. But I want you to see some scriptures in the Bible, starting, for instance, in Ephesians chapter two. If we could, um, can I go ahead, Dave, and make this happen by myself? Okay. Um, is it working for me? I'm trying to go to Ephesians, there we go. Therefore, remember that you were once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. This is under the law, okay? That at the time you were without Christ being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Now remember, the law was given to the Jewish people, not to Gentiles. This, letter was written to the Ephesian church. Okay, next. At that time, well, let's go back. <laughs> well, I'll just, it's, we were strangers of the, from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Okay. For he himself is our peace. Everyone say, our peace. I want you to get that. He himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the wall of separation. That's what the gospel does. The gospel brings all of us together. The devil wants us separated. The devil wants to separate us through scars and pain and memories. But the Bible says he's broken down this wall. Now what that wall is, it's the wall of sin. It's the wall of going our own way. The Bible says he's broken down the wall and verse 15, if I can get it here, having abolished in his flesh the hostility, everyone say hostility. It's what the word enmity means. 
He has abolished in his flesh the hostility that the law of the commandments contained in the ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Do you know that in the kingdom of heaven, there's only one race? There's not many races. There's only one. In that race, the common denominator is that we've been made one by the blood of Jesus. We're all one. Now you can be white, you can be Hispanic, Asian, African American, but in Christ, we are all one. Everyone say one. He wants you to begin to live and think from a kingdom vantage point. I'm not to live like I'm, I'm a white guy. I'm to live as a believer who is a true Jew in Christ. In the New Testament, Christians were, were, were referred, even Gentiles were referred to as Jews who were not one outwardly, but those who are one inwardly. And here's the beauty. God, Jesus, through his death, has broken down the wall. And what that means is, I no longer have to live with a guilty conscience. I no longer have to feel separated. I am now included in the family of God. I'm included in the blessing of a new covenant. Let, now I want you to read Revelations 21, 5 through 8. Listen to what this scripture says. In Revelations 21, 5, Okay, if I can get this to go. David, where do I look? Do I turn here? And he said to me, uh, let's go back, there we go. Then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I will make all things new. Everyone say all things. I want you to get this because this is what he's saying. We're breaking down the wall. All things are new. And he said to me, right for these words are true and faithful. Next, number, verse six. And he said to me, it is done. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. In other words, God put us on this path and he knows how the last chapter is gonna be written. So we need to really get into a place of rest because God is directing this whole thing. Number seven. And I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. Everyone say thirst. thirst. Now, God wants your thirst to be satisfied. He wants you to know that there's a wall been broken down so you can draw near. There should be nothing that keeps you from coming and drinking from the Holy Spirit. Amen. He says, I'm going to give of the fountain freely to those who thirst. Doesn't matter where you are, what you've done. He says, if you're thirsty, you need to come. You know, years ago, there was a man about 20 years ago, he was in our church and he was married to a woman. She was a wonderful gal. Both of them were wonderful people. But she came to me one time, his wife, by the way, I, I don't use testimonies of people unless they're gone. I don't use testimonies of people that are in the church here right now. But this individual, by the way, this has an amazing ending. But this individual came to me, the woman did, and she says, my husband is so hardened in his heart. He can barely talk to me. He has no way, he just has no expression. He's a tremendous provider. He knows, he, he was an electrical uh, in the electrical area of contracting, working for a major company here in Dallas. And she came to me, she says, I, I can't stay married to this man anymore because he's just, he's just dead. I can hardly get a word out of him, but I, I might get a grunt out of the guy. Just doesn't talk, doesn't open up. And so she said, I, I've really had it. I, I, I wanna leave the guy. I said, you know what, right now is the prime time where the Lord wants to manifest his glory. And uh, 
I said, let me go out and have coffee with him. And I did. When I went out to have coffee with him, I come to find out he's really a great guy. Awesome contract, really focused on his job. He's doing well. He was in management in his job. He's doing really well in his business. But in his personal life and in his marriage, he was locked up. There were some serious walls in his life. And I sat, I sat down with him and I said, can you, can you open up a little bit about your history? I, I want to hear from you. He says, well, I, I really don't want to open up about things in my past because I, I don't want to get judged. I'm afraid that somebody's going to really hammer me with the Bible. He said, I, I'm not going to do that. I promise you, I will not do that. He began to tell me a little bit about his life and he said that, his, his dad left his mom when he was really young. And then I had a mother that was very wounded, very hurt, men coming and going in her life. And I had many men that would come in that my mom would bring home and they would just beat the crap out of me. I was beaten, I was hurt. I never, I never understood what a relationship was. But I knew one thing, I wanted out of that house. I wanted away from my mother. And when somebody talks to me about love, to me, that's nothing more than a curse word. It doesn't mean anything to me. But as he grew up, he met his wife. They met together and she was a very outgoing, warm woman, very warm, very sensitive, very caring. And she loved the guy and she began to show him some attention and affection. And, and they eventually got married. When they got married, he opened up a little bit, but then like a, like a little crab, he went back into his shell. And so their marriage really wasn't going anywhere. They were isolated. And a lot of people do not know how to come out because of these walls in their life. How many here have ever met somebody that has a wall in their life, okay? We all know them. But I want you to know, there's something that can pierce the wall. There's something that could get into that wall. You know what it is? It's the love of God. And it's time. And I remember talking to this gentleman, and I said, I want to know your story. And he says, why? Well, why do you want to hear my story? I said, because your story matters. It matters. So he began to share his story. Tell me about what happened. His dad left him. I asked my mom about my dad, and my mom would slap me in the face if I asked him. I didn't know. So I began to do what I could do. I scavenged in the streets, did what I could do to get a little money. Then he says, I got into smoking dope, and that began to mess my mind up. Then he said this, he says, I, I really just ran away, not alone. I ran and he said he got connected with a, a cousin of his later on. But then he got into the electrical business because his cousin taught him some things. Got into it and did really well. He, he became a, a master electrician when he was married to his wife. Coming up to that point in time, um, she came back to me and she says, you know, how, how'd your meeting go with my husband? I said, I think it really went well. But I said, there's some layers there's some layers and there's some scars. There's a lot of anger. And when someone isolated, there's anger. And the reason, if you get, start pulling the layers off and you get behind the layers, then you begin to get into fear. Anger is usually motivated by fear. And behind the fear, when you get into the very core of a person, there's a lie. It's a lie that actually demoralizes them. They believe a lie. And because the lie is so real based on the way they've been treated, they're afraid. And that fray, that fear begins to put another face called anger. And out of the anger comes isolation and excuses. And when you try to get close to them, they push you away. Because they've been hurt. Because there's a lie. There's a lie in their subconscious that's driving them. And I said, the way we're going to help your husband is doing what Jesus did. 
And I remember taking this woman to John chapter 4. I said, remember when Jesus came to the woman at the well? She was angry. She was hurt. She was wounded. And she was pushing things away. She was a woman with a lot of buckets coming to the wrong well. And she was a lot of toxic stuff in her life. Aren't you grateful that God takes us with all of our toxic messes and he just empties the toxic stuff out and he pours in his love. He loves us. And what I want you to see something here this morning, it's a really important truth. And I want to go on, let me go on in this text. Here's the God will give freely of the waters of life. Let's keep going. Jason on the water there. No, go back to verse 7. Sorry. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son or daughter. Verse 8. Verse 8. But the cowardly or fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, by the way, the word sorcerer there is where we get the Greek word pharmakia, which means drugs. Those who are into drugs, idolaters, and all liars, go back, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, there's a warning here in Revelations. What the Lord is basically saying is we need to find the living waters, amen? We need to carefully guard and steward your thirst. You don't want to give your thirst to idolatry. You don't want to go drinking out of the wrong cistern. You don't want to go drinking out of the toilet. I know I'm going to use a horrible word. You don't want to drink out of that. You need to realize that God put and made you in a way where you, and he gives you the will, he gives you the choice to steward your thirst and to come to him. Now, I want to just take you into uh, where it says here, John, turn with me to John chapter 4. I want to show you a real important story this morning, and I'm going to close. It says here, in verse 43, when Jesus is talking to the woman, I was here last week, but I want to go deeper into verse 13 and 14. Jesus said, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. In other words, if, if you haven't had that conversion in your life, if your heart and your mind has not experienced the grace of God that is the thing that really renews your mind, if you haven't experienced that, you're going to go back to drinking out of the wrong wells, wrong, the wrong wells of some wrong relationships. I remember when I was a young man, I was running away from God. I was like a Jonah. And I started drinking out of some bad wells, and I got addicted to things. I was into some wrong influence. I made some stupid decisions, and it come back to bite me. It hurt me bad. But I'm so thankful that God didn't let go of me. He loved me. Jesus goes on here to say to this woman, keep in mind, he's dealing with a woman that has some walls. When people have walls, I, can I say this? When you meet people that have walls, don't judge them. Don't write them off. Look at them as opportunities for God's love and tenderness and that river that's in you to flow into them because Walled people are people that are really thirsty. They want relationship. They want favor. They want to experience. And notice what Jesus says here. I love this. It's, it's a kingdom message. He says, whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Everyone say never thirst. What that means is, is the water, speaking of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God and it becomes a living rhema, it becomes living bread, it becomes the living water inside of you. And the, here's, here's the beautiful thing. It begins to open your eyes concerning who He is. It says it will be in Him 
but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water. Notice this, springing up. Now listen, these words are there for a reason. Everyone say springing up. This is a fountain that's going to cause you to be lifted up. It's the kind of life that begins to lift your vision. It begins to motivate. It begins to heal you. But it always takes you up. When you get saved, you know what you're doing? You're trading up. You're coming up. It's, it's a fountain that is so refreshing and so life-giving. Jesus said it's a, it's a fountain that springs. That means there's a power, there's a life in you that brings you up into everlasting life. I don't die to get into everlasting life. When I'm born again, I'm in everlasting life. I'm beginning to see through new eyes. I'm beginning to see a problem with opportunities. I, my wife, it's amazing, I just love her. She's broke her wrist in July 4th of this year, and she's been in a lot of pain. But you know, we've been praying over her wrist, and we've been speaking life. And Carol says, you know, Ray, she told me this uh, last week. She says, you know, God, he showed me something through this wrist, and it was a great revelation. I can't, I'm going to let her share that sometime. But she said, the Lord showed me something. Had I not had my wrist broken, I would probably have never realized this. It was an awesome truth that she learned. See, God can take what the devil means for evil. And she, she, was, she was rejoicing. She still has pain in her wrist, and we're believing God for that. But I want you to notice, he said, it will be a fountain. Now, what Jesus does is he introduces the fountain. Now, here's the key to the fountain. First of all, Jesus says, I'm going to give you. And I've got to be in a place of expectation, and I need to be in a place when I'm thirsty to ask. Everyone say, ask. When's the last time you said, Lord, I'm asking you to give me that fountain that springs up. I'm asking you, Lord, to baptize me with the Holy Spirit so the life of God, that prophetic understanding will spring up in my life. So I will bring life. I'm going to bring life to people. I'm going I'm to be a carrier of that anointing. And notice what Jesus says, because here's... Here's the key to the fountain. Remember what Jesus said? When Jesus talks about the living water in the fountain, Jesus kind of takes her attention off the water and he begins to steer her attention towards something that she's hiding, something that she's ashamed of. Because Jesus prophetically points out, says, go get your husband. That woman probably said, what in the world does living water have to do with my personal life? Here's the point. You're never going to drink until you know that the Lord has access to things in your life you are protecting because of shame. The woman at the well, her problem was the wall of shame. Shame was holding her back. Shame was keeping her dry. But Jesus was getting her to a place to come clean. Everyone say, come clean. You'll never know the living water until you come clean with the thing that will hinder you from drinking. God knows that there's a lot of people that come to church and they leave the same way they come in. You know why? Because they got walls. They got lies inside. They're holding back. They can't drink because they're hanging on to something that God wants them to release to him. I cannot know the fountain until I come clean. And I, Lord, I'm an adulteress. Lord, the reason why Jesus told her to go get, Jesus already knew she had adultery. And, and it wasn't the adultery though. That was the symptom. That was the symptom of the problem. The real problem was this, is she was broken and lost. And the Lord was really trying to show her that, you know what, the cycles of defeat and the cycles of issues and problems in your life can be broken when you come clean 
and you bring your problem to me. When I bring my problem to him and really come forward and say, Lord, I want to come clean with what I am. I want to come clean that I'm a liar. I want to come clean, Lord, that I have an addiction. I want to come clean, Lord, that I don't love my wife. I want to come clean, Lord, that I've got a pornography problem. I want to come clean, Lord, that I've got addictions. I'm tired of drinking out of those wells. I want to come clean with who I am and what I've been doing so you can transform me. Here's what happens when you begin to come clean. There are three things. I call them the three R's of the fountain. The first R is this, is the fountain that reveals Jesus as the Savior. That's what the fountain will do. It'll begin to reveal Jesus as our Savior, healer, and one who cleanses and delivers us. The second R of the fountain is release. Everyone say release. The purpose of the river is to release you from condemnation, from your sin, your past, your pain, by the blood of the Lamb. And the third R is this, he restores. He restores us into fellowship from the slavery of sin to our Heavenly Father and the family of God. The three R's again is when I begin to come clean, that's when the fountain begins to reveal who he is. Who is he? He's Jesus. He's the Lamb. He's my God. He's my Lord. He, he comes to reveal. Secondly, he comes to release. Wants to set you free. And the last one, he comes to restore. Everyone say that with me. Yeah, let me give you the three R's. Let's say it together. Re reveal, release, and restore. Say it again. Re reveal, release, and restore. Amen? And guess what? When we begin to embrace our Savior, when we begin to embrace him in those seasons of our time, what he's going to do, the Bible says he's going to pour in you rivers that overflow. Out of your bellies will flow rivers of life. That's where healing comes. Amen? Let's bow our heads this morning. Bow our heads this morning. You know, God wants to take those strongholds. There's a Greek word, I forgot to say this, but there's a Greek word in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and it says this, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, and principalities and powers, and strongholds, tearing down strongholds. The word stronghold is taken out of a Greek word which means a prison or a fortress. A fortress is what keeps the enemy out. Those are, those are good walls. But th there's also the prison of sin. Those are walls around you where you can't get out of. And this morning, the Lord wants to remove the lie, remove the wall so he can reveal the fountain, the fountain in you, really, which is the presence of the Holy Spirit to reveal, to release, and restore you. Maybe that's you this morning. You may say, Pastor Ray, I've got some walls in my life and I know I need some healing. If that's you, raise your hand. I want to pray for you this morning. Anybody? Okay, I've got some walls. There's some things there that I need to be set free from. Okay, you can put your hand down on that one. Now I'm going to ask another question. How many here have been thirsty for a long time and you just need a touch of the Lord upon your life? You, you, you just need that fresh touch from the Holy Spirit. You're not in sin. You're not running from God or anything. You just need a touch from the living God. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Amen. See your hands. <clears throat> I want us all to stand here this morning. I, I want to do something. I, I, I haven't done this in a long time, but the Holy Spirit this morning, I wish my wife was here because we were praying about this together. But I really felt I needed to lay hands on some of you. And I felt like the Lord said, I want to release my presence in such a way that begins to cause your mind to get into alignment. But here's what else. For your mind to come into alignment so you can relax. 
Do you know you can't drink when you're uptight? God wants your mind to be at peace so you can begin to receive. But if your mind is so uptight and your mind is in battles and you've got stressed out, the Lord wants to just bring you into a place of peace. First of all, he wants to reveal himself to you as a loving shepherd. He loves you. He cares about you. You matter to him. I want you to come down here. I want to pray for you. I believe the anointing is going to release joy. It's going to release peace. It's going to release life. And if that's you, if you would like to be prayed, I'm not going to force anybody. But if you'd like to have the river of God, I want to tell you, God sees you as champions. He sees you as his people. And when we're thirsty, he doesn't deny us. He says, whosoever thirsts, let him come and drink freely of the waters. Do you know why he says that? Because you are so special. Well, I forgot this. I had a dream this morning. Literally, as before I, I woke up with Carol at four, we were praying. I saw our church. And I, it was an amazing dream. I saw our church and I was here in the sanctuary in this dream, but nobody was in it. But what I saw was stones. I saw beautiful emeralds, diamonds, rubies, just unbelievable color. And the Lord spoke to me, says, I want you to tell my people that they are all precious stones and I'm polishing them. I'm working on them. And they're coming forth pure, clean, polished, and bright. Let the people know in open heavens that a river is going to come to this church. And there is going to be a refreshing river that's going to have not one stream, but many streams going out of it. And the Lord just impressed on me. He says, let them know to be encouraged that I am a God who loves them, cares about them. You know, a beautiful thing here is this. When I pray for you today, I want you to pray as though a miracle will happen. I want you to pray that way. I want you to, okay, th Father, thank you for the miracle. Thank you, Lord. Don't, don't just stay there empty-headed. I want you to thank. I want you to pray. I want you to agree that a river is coming to refresh reveal, release, and restore. Because that's, that's our shepherd. That's our shepherd. That's the one who loves us so much. Amen. Amen. God is so good, isn't he? Praise God. I'm, I'm going to start here with Paul and Linda. I'm going to lay hands. Just, just pray with me as we pray. Father, I thank you for these servants. Wonderful servants of the kingdom. They've come to serve, and we pray today that in their home, there would be such life-giving waters. Lord, we thank you that you're doing a new thing, a new thing in them, Lord. Lord, we thank you for where they've come from and, Lord, where you're taking them. Lord, it's going to be a place where there's going to be an oasis of life. Father, we just pray right now that all fear would be gone. Every lie of the enemy has been smitten. And, Lord, they come into your presence, Lord, with a pure heart, clean hands. So, Lord, we thank you that you have done a great thing in Paul and Linda. Father, we thank you for Mary. Oh, God, such a woman of faith. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that she is a precious, precious individual. Oh, God, you see her. And, Lord, you are so proud of Mary. Lord, you see her faithfulness. She's a woman who does a lot of things behind the scenes. But Lord, you come to just seal your covenant with her. And those promises, Lord, those prayers she's made before you will come to pass in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for Antonia, Camille. Oh, Lord, a couple who's covenanted before God. They've made their prayers. I, I just almost see them bringing a list. Lord, there's some things we need to get taken care of. The Lord sees it. The Lord knows your heart. 
the Lord sees that you've been clay in his hands. He can mold you. He can shape you. You're a vessel of honor. You're not a vessel of dishonor. You are a vessel of honor. He can trust you. God can trust you with things in his heart. He's going to place in your heart. By the way, you are going to be a bridge that's going to reach some people that are really broken. I see some, wow, broken couples. People that are just broken. They're going to come. They're, they're going to trust you. They won't come to church, but they're going to come to see you. They're going to come to see you guys. You're, you, you're going to really pastor. There's, some, there's a spirit of wisdom on both of you. And it's because you guys have walked through some stuff. But God has given you wisdom. By the way, the Lord put you together. Let's, let's make that. The Lord put you two together. This was not just something that happened. The Lord put you together. He's reminding you today, the Lord did it. The Lord did it. Wow. We're not looking back. We're not looking to no river we are anymore. We're looking straight ahead. Wow. There's an awesome call. There's a call on your life. I see you, God using you to call you to youth. I just see you. Because you've got a real heart for young people. You know, you're, you're an older man, but man, you've got the heart to reach young people. I mean, I just see you not only coaching football, but man, you're going to coach some young people too. You really are. <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for Nehemiah. We thank you for this pastor. This is a shepherd. Him and Megan, wonderful people. We ask you, Lord, to continue to pour out your spirit of refreshing. We thank you for the wisdom. Man, I, I learned so much from Nehem myself. Lord, thank you for this mighty man of God. Lord, I just thank you for the insight. There's, there's insight like Solomon on this guy. Man, there's been a, there's been an, you've asked God for wisdom. And he's given it to you. I, I just saw you asking, Lord, God, give me wisdom. Lord, give me understanding. Give me knowledge. You've asked God for wisdom, but I also see something. Not only has he given you wisdom, he's given you a heart. Because you know what it is to have a broken heart. You've been there in seasons where your heart was broken, but the Lord has given you the heart of a father. You're a father in Israel, man. You're a father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Amen, for sure. Wow. This is a Deborah. Man, she, she's, she's a warrior. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, that you have come to do amazing things. She just made a move physically, but God is saying get ready for a shift and get ready for some promotion. There is going to come into your life a job. I see the Lord opening up some form of employment that is going to just fit you like a glove and it's going to be a blessing and you it's going to be actually fun you're going to because you, what you have paid your dues and the lord's coming to say i am going to shock you i'm going to surprise you i'm going to bless you beyond your expectation amen there's been times where you've said lord i feel left behind i feel like you know god you're blessing everybody else but what about me surely here here lord You've said that, I think. I mean, that's what I'm <laughs> sensing. But I just sense the Lord says, I'm going to bring you to the front of the pack. My name is on, my. I've got your name and my lips, and I'm here to let you know that you're not forgotten. You're not some grocery sack in some grocer's back, you know, uh, some stockyard in some back warehouse. I haven't forgotten you, and I haven't forgotten your kids. You watch what I do to your sons. You watch how I do something that's even beyond their own. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I, lo I love the, I love to bring things that cause people to marvel. Watch, watch something happen. Expect it. There's a shift this year. Father, I thank you. Amen. For this awesome woman, woman of God. We thank you for, for Claudia the deposit of God. There's a heritage even from her family. An amazing heritage in the Lord. And we just pray right now for an infilling, an outpouring of your spirit. Lord, she's constantly giving out, pouring out, standing in the gap. Much, much pressure 
comes upon this woman. We ask you, Lord, for an impartation. Today, I just sense the Lord saying one word for you, Claudelia. It's double portion. Double for your trouble. I just sense the Lord coming to give you something double. And when you see it, you're going to know it, just like Job did. Job experienced loss. He experienced grief. He went through a season, but God never took his hand off him. And the Lord began to reveal himself. And the Lord's coming to bless you. Even, again, shifts are coming. Different. There's going to be some changes. There's changes coming, but the Lord has his hand on it. And guess what? Every shift, every change he's made, has he not taken you higher? Has he not blessed you more? Has he not even added to your testimony? There's going to be a day you're going to write a book. Man alive. And that book is going to be about breakthrough. It's going to be about a God who takes us from his glory to a greater glory. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> get ready. He's going to release the song. Amen. Thank you, Father. We thank you for Dana. Lord, we thank you for Dave. Oh, God, precious, precious people. People who know what loss is all about. People who have grieved, who've gone through things that no one can explain. But yet the Lord has put a mark on you. Just as Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, there were scars. Those scars are on Jesus' hands, his feet and his side. Those scars forever are the scars not of defeat, not of shame, but those scars are the testimony that Jesus rose from the dead. I'm going to raise you up from the dead. I'm raising you to a place of victory, O oh woman. Those scars are not scars of the enemy's defeat. Those are scars that prove that those are badges. Those are badges of compliment. Those are things that show the world that you came through it. The devil didn't have the last word. He's the Alpha and Omega. The Lord has come even this day to anoint you afresh, to put a fresh song. You are not defeated. The Lord actually entrusted you with something that others could not walk through because he saw the strength in you. Oh, if you could only know how you should see yourself as the Lord sees you. For the Lord has sought to put a lie in your mind to think the Lord has taken something. No, the Lord comes. He may take, but he comes to give back and he comes to restore. You are a gift to the Lord. You are so precious to him. You know, both of you in your marriage, you're like a positive and a negative. But the strength of your lives is because you work together. God puts you together. You're unique. And God has placed you together. And there's a testimony. There's a testimony of faithfulness and strength. And there's a testimony of God's goodness. Oh, man of God, he comes to refresh you today. He comes to let you know that you are a beloved son. Not because you're trying. Because just because he just loves David more. He just loves David. He loves David as a son. You're approved of God. Approved of God. And so are you, Dana. Approved. The Lord just comes this morning to just kind of clean the dust off and take you off the shelf. And he wants to begin to open your mouth and use you in a powerful way. Wonderful. Wonderful people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Keep, keep your hands. I know we're a little going. Let's pray for John, shall we? Father, we thank you. Oh, John and Kathy. Lord, we thank you for this couple. Lord, they have been a trumpet. Like the prophet Joel, a trumpet to sound the alarm. You have warned. You have given words. You've given a prophet. You've been a voice, a trumpet. You've been, a, you've been a trumpet to sound the alarm, even in the secular field, even in your family, even in your neighborhood, even in the house of God. You've been a voice, even to the shepherds of this house. 
you've been a word, you've, God has given you an insight. There's, there's like a, a, a built-in prophetic radar system, a, an, an understanding to perceive. And God has given you, like Solomon, there's a wisdom because you said, Lord, I only want what you want. Yes. Yes. Lord, I only care about what you care about. Right. Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you do. You, you, you laid your life down. You said, Lord, I'm, I'm not going back. I'm moving forward, Lord. You, you've made a commitment. There's a covenant even in your marriage together. No matter what others do, we're going to serve God. You've seen pastors come and go. You've seen leaders come and go. You've, you've heard things, but you've remained faithful. Like I said, as a Joshua, there's a mountain, there's, a, there's an inheritance. The war is not over. There's still mountains, there's still cities to take. But the Lord has given you strength, O oh man of God. You are a shepherd, you are a trumpet, you're a voice. Your wife is a voice. Both of you are trumpets. God has given you a word. I even see you standing before dignitaries, even leaders, in, maybe even in your own employment. Uh, sounding the alarm. Days ahead, there will be shifts. There's going to be, as Jesus said, there is going to be changes. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be some things in our own nation because the Lord is shaking. Yes. But I'm raising those that are unshakable. There's going to be those that will be raised to be a voice, to be a ministry to the world around them. And it's going to be a ministry of hope, but also a ministry of warning to those who will not hear. We need to give hope, we need to give life, but we need to give warning. Father, we pray. Father, we thank you for Larry. Oh God, we thank you that you brought this man out of the miry clay and you shaped him there was a day where there was hardness. The Lord took the hardness of the heart and he began to pour fresh water upon you. He softened you. He let you know that he is your father. You are his son and he has made you a vessel of honor. There were days where you said, Lord, I don't know if I can go on. You said in your own spirit, I don't know. I don't know, but the Lord comes to give you an inner knowledge that he is with you. And then also the Lord comes to give you a light. There's light, there's wisdom, there's an understanding of what you need to do. And also the Lord is going to equip your hands, you and your wife. There's going to be healing in your hands. You're a creative man. You love to create. You love to put things together. You love to make difficult things simple. That's who you are. You're a precious, you're a precious man. You're precious in the sight of the King. And Jesus comes to pour fresh water on you, old man. It's time to stop tearing yourself it's time to stop beating yourself up. It's time to lift your head up and say, thank you, Lord, for the finished work. He loves you. I want to give you a hug. like Priscilla and Aquila in the book of Acts. They were such a team. And they were such a blessing. They were like the right hand man of the Apostle Paul. And they came to just bless. And they taught the way. And they, they brought the way of the Lord more perfectly. Apollos was discipled by Aquila and Priscilla. And I just see the Lord giving both of you a spirit of counsel and a spirit of wisdom. But there's also something God has given you. Compassion. Because you've been broken. 
You know what it's like to go through some difficult times. But the Lord looks upon you and he sees you as a daughter that he's proud of. He is proud of you, Diane. He loves you. He's given you a heart for broken women. You're, you're going to minister to some women that are in this. They won't come to Pastor Carol or Ray, but they're going to come to Diane and Bill. They're going to come to you guys because they see the love. They sense they, they, you guys are so approachable. Anybody can come. To, you're just such approachable. And it's, it's, the, it's the Holy Spirit. It's the anointing. You guys are like a fruit tree. There's so many fruits on your tree. And when people taste you, it tastes good. I just see you like an apple tree, a cherry tree, a plum tree, a peach tree. And there's so much fruit on you. It's a, it's a vision I'm getting from the Lord. There's so much fruit and it's tasty. And you guys just ooze out the sweetness and the aroma and the fragrance of the Lord. The Lord put you together. All God has put you together. And you watch how God is going to work in family. You watch how God is going to work with your friends. You guys are going to reach people that others can't reach. Bill, I tell you, I, I know I've said this to you in private, but God's going to loosen your tongue because you are a leader among men. God has given you a gift and an ability to understand men. You know, you know what men do. You know how they think. And you have been given a grace to just unpack the problem and help them see the vision they can have. There is such an optimism and a vision and a confidence. You are approved and just favored by God Almighty. I just sense that. That is the Lord. He's a loose in your mouth. I know, I, you know, I'm going to tell you. I said, Bill, you're going to speak. You know, he's, he's kind of shy. But you know what? It's amazing. God always loves to pick the guys that don't want to speak. God always does that. <laughs> and I'm so proud of him. Amen. Isn't God good? Is God not good? We serve, we serve an awesome, awesome God. Amen. Aaron, I got a word for you. I know you're my son. Aaron, this guy over here, he's my flesh and blood, but I got a word. Amen. I see a book. And I see this book opened up. And I see chapters of the book have been read. And the Lord just showed me there's more chapters for you and Maria. And I see right now a real anointing on both of you. Both of you have really grown in the Lord. There's a wisdom on both of you. And there's also a heart for this generation. And Aaron, Maria, God has filled your cup full. You, you almost said, well, I, I wish we had more training. I wish we had more equipping. I want to tell you, you got a lot right now, but you can go a long way. There's more chapters. God is going to open those chapters. And some of those chapters are going to be gifts. Some of those chapters are going to be understanding how to work with difficult situations. He'll give you the grace to do it. By the way, by the way, there's a real prophetic touch, uh, Maria. There's a prophetic man. I, I want to tell you something. You need to be prophesying. The Lord just spoke to you. He's given you words. Also you. God has given you words, and uh, the Lord wants to open your mouth to prophetic words. Have you ever had that? Have you ever felt the Lord give you a word? Amen. I just sensed that. Also, Kim. Amen. This is my awesome daughter-in-law. Thank you, Lord. You are an amazing shepherd, an example in the kingdom. And uh, I just see more and more women around you, even in your school. I know you're substitute or something. I just see people coming to you. But I just sense the Lord, he's been talking to you. And you are very careful. Lord, I want to make sure things are from you and not from me, not from man. You're cautious. You're careful. 
You're a woman who stewards her life in a very disciplined way. You're a role model. You're an example. You're a true shepherd. A lot of women can be strengthened by what God has given you. And I just see not only you and David as a team, as shepherds, but I just see the Lord really just drawing you out. And can I just say this? I know I'm dad, father-in-law, but it, it really isn't from me. It, I really sense this. The Lord has put a seal on you. And he's come to let you know that uh, even in times ahead, I just sense things are going to shake in our world. But you're a rock. There's a rock in you that you're going to help lead people to the Lord. Just maybe through just one little word. May not be necessarily discipling them, but there's a real counsel, there's a real approval of God on your life. Anyway, I just felt the Lord impress that on me. Yes, Paula? Okay, Paula would like me to pray for her. Can you stretch your hand? I'm going to pray for Paula. Father, we thank you for this mother in Israel. Paula has been a real mom to a lot of people. She gives and serves when no one even knows it. Lord, I thank you for mom. I thank you, Lord, for this woman. Thank you for Verla and her husband, too. Lord, we thank you, Father, that you have just given her hands. You've been like Mary broke the alabaster box. The perfume just filled the room. You've been devoted, yielded to the Lord. You said, Lord, I give you my worship. I give you my life. You're a giant in the kingdom. The Lord loves you. The Lord comes to just restore strength to you today. Strength in your body. He comes to let you know that your influence, your words have been life. They have made a difference. You have made a great difference. Today, the Lord just embraces you. You're a wonderful woman of God, such a blessing in the house of God. We thank you, Father. We thank you for Paula, who she is. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Aren't you grateful for Paula? Isn't Paula awesome? We love you. Let's all stand to our feet. I'm going to close in prayer. God is faithful. Let's, let's let that fountain overflow. Amen. Remember, he's going to come to reveal, release, and Restore. <laughs> I forgot myself. Reveal, release, and restore. Father, we love you today. Lord, we thank you for your love and goodness. We thank you that you, we're so grateful you have broken down the middle wall. Lord, you brought us in. And Lord, we're not going to live like outsiders anymore. That's over with. We're coming in to the promises of God. We give you the praise. And everyone said, amen. Turn to someone and give them a hug. God bless you guys in Jesus' name. <laughs> I want to thank you. What is your shirt say? Amazing Grace. <laughs> Does it look bad? Hey, I was going to ask you, was I messing up in the Turner today? Everyone needs to practice their stuff. Could I do that this week sometime with you? Yeah, Wednesday is when he's been.